Good morning. So let's begin. <clears throat> Thank you, everyone, uh, for joining the session and uh, joining the class. I appreciate. So today, I'm going to discuss more about database layer. When we talk about SAP R3 architecture, as we discussed in the beginning of our class. So SAP architecture has SAP presentation layer. It has SAP application layer. And we have SAP database layer so these are the different layers good morning that's it. so presentation layer is where functional consultant works on application layer is where programmers or or developers works on database layer is where your uh, your basis your net weaver or admins works on so as a functional consultant we work on the presentation layer but behind the presentation layer there's application layer and there's a database layer. So that basically means when you run a transaction, when you're posting an invoice, when you're posting invoice, you're necessarily executing a program. But that data also goes somewhere. And finally, that data gets stored in the database layer. That is what happens. Now, for all the transactions which you are doing, all those Let us say I'm going to financial accounting, account payable or receivable or whatever, and I'm looking at the vendor master, you know, any vendor master which you've created. Now, ultimately, when you're executing this program or any program or any transaction, you're running a program. How do you know which program? So if you go to system and if you go to status, then you know this is the program you are executing. So when you are running, when you're creating a vendor master, there's a program. When you're creating a customer master, there's a program. When you're putting in a GL account posting, there's an account. When you're doing vendor invoice posting, there's a, there's a program. 
when you're doing custom invoice posting, there's programs. So all the different transactions which you're running, behind every transaction code, there's a program. So transaction code or T code is nothing but a way to execute a program. So rather than we execute a program directly, we are executing that program using this key. So this transaction code, whatever the transaction code is, one, two, three, you know, A, B, C, whatever different transaction codes are there in SAP, but each of this transaction code is basically nothing but executing a program. And then you can see other information also that this is my program, this what kind of operating system, and then you will also see what kind of database. So this is the Oracle database. So that basically means all that information which you see here in the vendor master. So all that information gets saved into the database of Oracle. When you're running this vendor, you are executing this program using this transaction code and ultimately the data which you're storing get stored in a database table and this is that database table which we can have in sap and similarly if you run to all these different screens if you go to system status this program. You can also see database table. So if I click function F1, that takes me to technical information. And that technical information takes me to the table. So one very important thing which we need to know is F1 key on your laptop. This key is important in a SAP world because this key, so for example, let us say you are in the vendor master, I just randomly selected vendor master, it could be any transaction. And we are here in the vendor master screen, for example, I'm looking at the reconciliation account. And I want to know the reconciliation account. Ultimately, all that information got saved into a table. So behind the scene, there is a table. Behind the scene, there is a table, and all the data get stored in a table. Now, which table is that? Is how do you find out which table it is? Now, there are thousands and thousands and thousands of tables in SAP. It is not possible. It is not recommended that you need to know all the tables. Having said that. There are some tables. Those tables are important. I'm going to keep this table on our Google Drive. So these are the table for GL account. These are the table for customer master. These are the table for vendor master. This is the table for the bank data. This is the table for various accounting documents. These are only few tables. And behind, beside these tables, there are many, many other tables as well. I'm not saying that you have to memorize all the tables, but these, some of these tables 
are important tables. Some of these tables are important tables. How we know which table to go? How do we know which table to go? So here, first and foremost, some of these tables you need to know. Some of the tables you need to memorize. Some of the, these tables has to be in the top of your head. Some of the table related to GL account for customer, for vendor, for bank, for accounting document. So they are 10, 15 table, important. And there are many others, but at least these are the very minimum we need to know. And we have to have a good idea about the table. Now, if I go to vendor master, so the vendor master system tells me that in vendor master, table for accounting information, table for company code information goes to the table lfv1 lfv1 is the name of the table in which your vendors company code data get stored there are other tables also so if we talk of the vendor master there are multiple tables lfv1 lfv1 lfv5 lfm1 lfm2 lfbk a lot of primary and secondary tables so one record gets stored in more than one table. Do not expect that entire customer goes to one table or vendor goes to one table or customer invoice or vendor invoice and all different transaction goes and saved into one table. No, there's always more than one table behind the scene. There's always more than one table behind the scene. Some are primary table, some are secondary table, some are tertiary table, some are summation table, some are aggregate tables, different type of tables, storing different kind of information about an object. Number of tables in HANA got reduced though. The number of tables in HANA is less than what we have in RDBMS. But nevertheless, there are more than one table. Now, here we have a vendor master going to the table LFV1. Now, how do we know that this is going to LFV1? So, I go to vendor master. So, let us say this is my vendor master, the company code is E037. This is my reconciliation account or whatever information I put in. I want to know which table it is going. The most easiest way to find a table is to click F1 from your computer. When you click F1, then there is a technical information here. And when you go to technical information, then you will see the name of the table, LFV1. LFV1 is the table. In this table, AQNT is the name of the page. So we have this table and we have this field. That is what we are seeing here. LFV1. And if I go back here, LFV1. In LFV1, this is the field. So this table and this field of the table, this information gets stored. Okay. okay. So this table. 
and this field in the table, all this information gets stored. Okay. Now, and I will put this table. There are some uh, important transaction code which everybody needs to know. So make a note of this transaction code. SE 69, SE 16. So this is old. This is new. Then we have SE 11, SE 38, SE 37, SM 30. Make a note of these transaction codes. These transaction codes are very broadly, widely used in the real world. A lot of these things which I'm talking to you about is what is done in the real world. So when you go on an SAP project, these are some of the transaction codes you will be using quite often, specifically if you are in a support environment and otherwise also. So make a note of this transaction code. SE 16 N, N means new. Before that, we used to have SE 16. SE 16 is still available. Uh, SE 11, SE 38, SE 37, and SM 30. These are many other, but these are some of the important transaction keys. Now, SE 11, so first thing which you want to do, run T code SE 11. So I want to run transition code SE 11. I want to run transition code SE 11. So let me close this. And now I open another session. So this is create another session. And I want to go to SE 11. SE 11. Allow me to review the ABAP dictionary. So S11 allows me to review SAP <coughs> data dictionary. Make a note of that. <coughs> to review <coughs> SAP data dictionary. SAP data dictionary. Now, what is the meaning of that? So I put here table. So I saw the table, and the table was LFB1. I can again see here, I click F1 on my computer. And I go to technical information. And I take a name of the table, LFP1. And if I put my LFP1 here, and if I go to display, it will show me. So first and foremost, SE11 will tell me if this is a table or this is not a table. So if it is a real table, then it will open. If it is not a real table, then it will not open. So S11 can be used to review if table is correct. 
So S11 can be used to review if we have correct table name or not. If you have a correct table name, then this will open. If this is not a correct table name, then this will not open. So it will tell me the correct table name. The second thing, it will provide us table structure. So what kind of table it is, what are the fields, what are those fields. So all that information you will get in S11. If we come back here, in this table alone, there are 75 fields. You see that here? There are 75 fields. This is a reconciliation account. So reconciliation account, this is the name of the table. This is the name of the field, A-K-O-N-T. This is a character field. What type of field is a character? Is a numeric? It is a date. Is like this is numeric. <clears throat> this is a character type dates. So this is a character type. Correct. Uh, this is a data type character. And the length of this field is ten, <clears throat> ten digits. So you can have a ten digit data length. And that is where we can see reconciliation. Now, table name you need to know because when you're working in the real world, you do a lot of field mapping and all that. So when you're writing functional specification, in that field mapping is one of the important aspects. Field mapping is one of the things which is important. So for such activity like field mapping and all that, you need to know which table the data will go. That is why an information and knowledge about some of the key database table is very, very necessary. Because you will be working with these tables quite extensively when you're working on the real world. <clears throat> you may be, <clears throat> you may be having a, you know, responsibility of doing field mapping. And if you have a responsibility of doing field mapping, in that case, you are just working with the tables and the nomenclature. So again, as I was mentioning yesterday also, that when we are talking about configuration and all that, that may be your responsibility and, and you get end up getting on a support project or some other project where you may not be doing any configuration at all. You've been assigned with some functional specifications. What you're doing is mostly field mapping. You are assigned to a data conversion. So in that table, you are doing mostly the uh, mostly working with the, some database tables and doing the field mapping and all that. That is why our ability to understand the data dictionary, at least some of the tables, some of the important tables. There are so many tables; it is not possible. It is not needed. I am not recommending that all those tables you have to memorize by heart. No, don't do that. It's not even needed. But you must know some of the critical table, some of the important table on the top of your head. That is extremely important. And that is very, very key for us to be aware of. So we have to work very extensively. And we do work very extensively with the data dictionary and various aspects of the data dictionary. So now we have found this is the table. 
and this is the field and that is what we see here if you go back here if you go to technical detail you see that lfv1 akont and that is what you see this table lfv1 and the name of the field is akont and that field is data type character and the length is 10 digit so it's a 10 digit length of this data okay so we can work on to that so we can have a reconciliation account in a general ledger so that is why this table s11 is important and that is what you can do with s11 similarly you can go back and check many other tables and you can see other table so now if you see here there is a table for accounting document so we created a lot of this accounting document bkpf BKPF is a very important table, by the way. It is used very often because all your financial accounting document goes into BKPF. BKPF is like a mother. It is just used everywhere. It's a very important table. So we can put BKPF. If you want to see the BKPF. And, if, and it tells you it's accounting data header table there are 107 documents in it very very important very important table can we modify a table and field name yes see standard you should not modify so normally so a standard table a standard table should not be modified. Any standard field must not be modified. So that basically means if I have a very standard field and whatever the characteristic of that field, it should not be changed. So characteristics of a standard field must not be changed. It is a is a big problem. Must be avoided. Having said that, you can create your own custom table as many as you want so if the standard table is not meeting your needs if you require some additional fields it is possible that does happen that does happen in the real world that you may require a lot of uh, custom field you require a lot of uh, your own field in such cases in such cases you can create your own table and you can create as many as table as you want You can create as many tables as you want. There's absolutely not a problem. Custom table, custom tables are created by developers on the FSD 
that is called functional specification document created by functional consultant so functional consultant create a specification document and on the basis of that specification document custom table will be created by functional consultant now by the um, by the ever programmers so table will be created by programmer only So that is how this works. I would like you guys to make a note of this term that is called functional specification document. Functional specification, functional specification document is one of the important documents which could be your responsibility, which could be one of your important uh, responsibility. apart from the many other responsibilities okay functional specification document now we have looked at this some of the tables now i want to go to another transaction code for se16n this is another transaction t code se16n this is important transaction code. This is another transaction code which is extremely important. And this is the transaction code which is used in the real world very, very extensively. So make a note of this transaction code if you have not yet. This T code, SC16, and if you are working in support project and all that, you will probably use many times per day. This is the one transaction code which you use probably the most often than any other transaction code this is what you will be doing when you are in the real world project specifically in the support project and all that <clears throat> se16n allows you to review Content of table. Which basically means what kind of data being stored in table. Make a note. And we can review the actual content in table make a note of that So let us say I have this table called LFB1. I come out from here. And now I type table SE16N. And then we hit enter. And then I put my table LFB1. We have to be very careful when we are running these reports. So we have to be very careful because these tables can have a lot of impact 
on the actual functioning. So that is why we have to be careful that when we are running the report and how quickly we are running the report, how soon we are running the report, how do we are running the report and all that. So we have to be very careful that uh, how we run these tables. Okay. So we have to be extremely careful in running the table. Now here, we have vendor master. I put my table. It takes all the field. I want to know all the vendors in the company code Z037. I go to number of general entry, and I click on it. The system tells me that We have five entries. We have these five entries. Hit enter. If I want those five entries, what those five entries are, I can execute. These are those five entries. These are vendor one, vendor two, vendor three, vendor four, vendor five. In this company code, created on these dates, created by these users. This is a reconciliation account. And it's the payment term. This is all different information. All the information which is stored in different field you can see. If you select, and uh, here, we have export function, the local file in a spreadsheet. Desktop, I put this file name, file name AA, save, generate. Three thousand five hundred forty bytes transferred. If I go back, and if we, so we see here, now my screen, the table uh, that uh, file AA has been come. So AAA is the name of Excel file. If we double click on AA and if it's yes, you see that entire data has been copied. Now, if I want to run, so this is how you can see the content, download that content in Excel sheet onto your computer, you will do that very often. Back. Now, let us say you want to run some other parameters. You want to know the vendor, which is created by the user Dilip. I have a different selection to parameter now. So earlier, I have a selection parameter of company go. Now I have a selection parameter. I put a different selection parameter that is called created by user Dilip. And then I hit execute. So now, by the user delete, we have a 66 entries. These are the 66 entries, which is there in this table starting from June of 2013. So the first vendor was created in June of 2013. And then we scroll down. Then we have all these different vendors being created and you can you can put a selection parameter you can uh, you can define if you want to download this whole data select all 
export data to a local file in a spreadsheet hit ok i want to you can choose the place where you want to store so i want to store on my desktop and i give a name of my file as bb whatever abcd whatever and we save it hit generate allow so 18874 byte transfer so we should have another file so there is another file here that is called bb We double click on it. And we say yes. Okay. Now all this data got copied. Now we have our 66 entries. So that is how you can download the data. You can execute the file. I remove those files. So these are the Covenda Master table. Let's say I choose another table. Uh, let's say a VKPF. That is accounting table, so we put VKPF, hit enter. When I put VKPF, then all the fields of VKPF appears here. Okay. And here, we can define uh, company code G037. How many documents are there in G037? Then we hit execute. Oh, put in the wrong field. So we put company code G037, number of entries. So there are 60 entries in uh, G037. I want to see, so this is number of entries you can see from here. And if I go back here, these are those 60 entries. These are those different uh, 60 transactions which we did during our course. So this is my company code, this document number, year, what kind of document, document date, posting date, entered on time, transaction date, user, transaction cross complete transaction code, you know, all those different data. We select that. And then if I want to export that to a local file, go to spreadsheet, hit enter. I select, I want a desktop. I put the file name, CC, generate, allow, enter. And I go to enter. And I go to double click here. Say so yes. And all the data get copied. Okay. So this is uh, uh, very important. Some of these transaction codes you need to be aware of. You need to be familiar with those transaction codes. So we talk about transaction code SE16 N. SE16 is uh, equivalent to SE16 N. Does the same thing, but is a old transaction code. Uh, some uh, uh, system uh, still use uh, SE16, so it's the same thing it does. So functionally wise. Uh, 
nowadays uh, we have come up with this SE16N. So a lot of people use this transaction code. Um, so we can use this transaction code instead. Okay. We talk about SE11. Then we have a transaction code called SE38. So now there's another important transaction code which you need to be aware. There is a T code SE38. This allows you to execute a program. A web program. allow you to execute a, a web program. So now we go to SC38, we hit execute. Now you can have a different program. You can put a name of the web program. So you can have a different programs which you can run from here now so let's say we have this program now we don't need to run this program from SE38 because this program is already connected to a transaction code. And if I hit execute, then see what it does. It takes you to your vendor screen. Look at here what I'm doing. So I put in a standard SCP program, SAP MF002K. This is a standard SAP vendor creation, vendor processing program. And when I execute this program, so I put the name of the program, and then I have execute button. Then we have execute button. It take you to the vendor master. So that basically means ultimately transaction code FK01, FK02, FK03, they're executing that program. Now, you will not be, standard SAP program will not be run by uh, ABAP editor. So this is basically ABAP editor. So this take you to ABAP editor, which can be used to run program a standard sap program a standard sap programs will run using t code sc38 if we see here you can use so sap38 is a program, is a T code used for writing any new custom program. So when we talk about ABAP programmers, so this is SF programmers world. This is what SF, uh, ABAP programmers do. So ABAP programmers basically And the programmers will be using this transaction code very, very extensively. Their entire world is revolving around this transaction code. That is what they do. SC38. Functional consultants, make a note, functional consultant. So now why I'm showing you? Functional consultant can use this program, this T code, to run custom program. 
So what happens in the real world, if you have a custom program, and there could be many, many custom programs, then how will you run those custom programs? How will you run those custom programs? Those custom programs can be used. Those custom programs we can run using this transaction code. This transaction code is very, very important. Transaction code to run to run your custom programs. So if you have a programmers has developed a custom program which is not assigned to a T code. So how will you run it? How will you test it? How will you execute it? You will run that program using transaction code SE38. That is why in the real world, you will be using this transaction code SE38 very, very often. So SE38, because you're here, you can execute a program. Now there is another transaction code which I want to be I want you to be aware of. That is called SE38. So we talk about SE37. Uh, we talk SE37. We talk when we want to talk about transaction code SE37. SE37 SE37 T code. SE37 is used for running a specific ABAP programs, which is called functional modules. So functional modules are nothing but a type of ABAP programs only. Function modules. They are a type of ABAP program only, but SE37 is used for this kind of ABAP program. That is what you use this program for. Okay. Make a note of that statement. Make a note of that statement. <clears throat> now, another thing which I want to talk about, transaction code SM30. SM30 is a transaction code to enter data into a table directly make a note of that statement this is also another transaction code you will be using very often this is another important transaction code so what happens is most standard SAP tables data cannot be entered directly. So when we talk about this customer table, vendor table, you cannot enter data directly. So let us say I want you to go to, let me close this. I make a note of my table. Back. Back. 
बैंक डू नॉट लॉग इन टू एस ए पी अलॉन्ग विद मी इन बैंक नाउ हियर I go to transaction code SM30. SM30. Hit enter. So let's say we have table LFB1. So we have that table LFB1. And I click button maintain. See the message in the bottom. maintenance dialog for lf1 is incomplete or not defined because this is a standard acp vendor master table therefore you cannot enter this table directly from here acp will not allow you have to run this transaction code you have to run vendor creation transaction code and only from that transaction code which is fk01 or xk01 you can maintain vendor otherwise this will be problem otherwise what will happen is people directly make an entry to the table and when you make a table uh, entry directly into the table then you will have this problem now let us say i take another table that is called bkpf so i make another table that is called bkpf and i maintain this table also in this table also we get a same message so in order to secure data integrity sap will not allow you to enter the table data into the standard sap table in most table that is the case so data directly entry to the table is not allowed make a note of that so that is a one of the important table okay you cannot enter the data directly but then why do we need this table then then why do we need sm30 so sm30 there can be there can be many custom tables and actually in the real world there are many many custom tables so when you go to the real world in the production environment there are many many custom tables there can be many custom table and we can maintain data into tables directly using sm30 make a note of that statement please so using transaction code sm30 we can maintain this table Okay. There can be many custom table, but we can maintain table directly with this table. So we need to know. So, for example, we saw that BKPF we cannot allow to enter. We saw that LFB one we cannot enter because these are standard as if table. So let's say I have a custom table. Z M A M M because it letter start with the letter Z, so that is why it allows you to enter. I put a Z M A M M and I hit maintain button. 
because this is a custom table because this is a custom table i don't know what is the field somebody created this is my country this is my year my profile material order quantity whatever we don't know what this table is doesn't make a difference so now i have a uh, 733 entries in it i want to enter another value into it now this is uh, entering it data directly into a table so i select that hit copy button and let's say i choose another material number and i select one of the material and i hit enter now this entry has been made directly to the table so now this entry has been made directly in the table now we have a 734 entries in the table and then we say data was saved so we have learned about some of these important transaction code how they impact us these are some of the transaction code data dictionary database tables how do you find the tables and the easiest way to find the table if you google you will find it but you you may not know sometime uh, you know so sometime it could be problem so but we can use uh, these transaction code make sure that you are familiar with these transaction code these transaction code are very extensively very commonly use in the real world now i want to talk about one more thing which is important that is called system landscape system landscape system landscape now this is another uh, important thing from the real world perspective every sap consultant need to know them so here there is a system landscape some important boxes so first box in the green color is a development box in a blue color is quality box and purple color is a production box in the real world you will have these three boxes sometimes even four which is for send box but these three are very very commonly used so we have production quality uh, development quality and production within development you can have a multiple client so this hardware normally they are three different hardware also in quality you can have a three different clients multiple clients 
In production, you can have a multiple current if you need it. I will like you guys to take a minute and draw these three boxes, box one, box two, box three. Make a note of these three boxes and type down what is written in to take a minute and please do that. Okay, so let's understand this. So in our class, we only have a one system and one client. But that will definitely will not be the case in the production or real world environment. <clears throat> in the production, in the real world environment, you will always have a one box for development. You can have a second box for quality. And you can have a third box for the production. So you will always have these three boxes. Now, what is the purpose of each of these boxes? What does this each of these boxes do? In the first box, is the development box. In development box also, you will see different clients. Client is normally three digit key. Now we are using client 800. So in our training, we have been using client 800, but it doesn't need to be 800. It could be 1,100, it's a three digit key. And uh, it could be 100 or 120, 110, whatever. But it's a three digit key. In that uh, you can have a, now why you have a different client? in each environment. So in the development, you have a multiple client, quality of a different client, and production of a different client. Because in each environment, you can have a different client for different purposes, for different reasons, for different reasons. Okay. Now here, in the development, you have 800. So for example, you can use 800 for configuration. You can use 900 for unit testing. So we talked about unit testing. You can use 700 for web development. So whenever a programmer is making a development, then they can make a development using client 700. So you can have a client 800, client 900, client 700. Then in the quality environment, you can have a different uh, clients. You can have a 600 for integration testing, 800 for the user acceptance testing, for 900 for training, for 700 for master data blocks. Because when you're doing all these different activities, for each of these activities, you may choose to do a different client. So you can have your own database. Then in the production is where the all production activity carried out. But in the production also, you can have a different client. So one is for running production, another one for the backup and all that. But SAP system landscape, this is the system landscape which is used in the real world. It is called three box, three system, SAP landscape. And that is a system landscape. You will see the real world. One for the box, one for quality, and one for production. We can have three boxes in the system. In the development, again, you can have a different, different clients. In quality, you can have a different, different client. In production, you can have a different client. Then we have here some transaction codes. In the transaction code, you can have a transaction code SE10. 
Now, what is transaction code as you tell? In transaction code as you tell, is use make a note of this transaction code as you tell, and make a note of this transaction code as TC1. Okay, so make a note of the transaction code SE10 and SEC1. These are the two important transaction codes. We'll talk about what these, these two transaction codes do, SE10 and SSC1. So T code, SE10 is important, is important because it is used for monitoring, releasing, transport requests. SC10 is important because it's used for monitoring, releasing transport requests. Now let's understand this. So now, I go to SC10. So SC10 is a transport organizer. Remember when we were doing configuration, when you did a, your configuration, I'm suppose, it will create a transport request. It will create a transport request for customizing request, for workbench request. So different kind of a transport request would be created. Transport request is of two types. Customizing request and workbench request. Make a note of that statement also. So transport requests are of two types. One is called customizing request. And the second one is workbench. Now, what is the difference? What customizing request is used is get created when we are customizing any object. For example, we are configuring a company code. So when you're configuring a company code, we're configuring a document type, we're configuring number range, any kind of a configuration we are doing, system creating, customizing request for that. Workbench requests get created when we are writing in a web program or changing data dictionary. So when we are uh, writing a web program or changing data dictionary, in that case, system create a workbench request. So most of your cases, because you are a functional consultant, so your transport request would be customizing requests. If you are an ABAP programmer, if you are a uh, NetViewer consultant or basis consultant or admin, then most of your uh, 
customizing request is going to be workbench. So transfer request is of two types, customizing request and the transfer request. So now if you see here, you will see transfer request. How many are, uh, so for this user delete, in your case, your user ID. How many transfer requests are there, which is the customizing type? How many transfer requests are there, which is a workbench type? Whether those requests are modifiable, whether those requests are released, modifiable and released. Make a note of that. Modifiable request or We have released request. Make a note. Release request are the re transport requests which has been released to be migrated to quality or production environment. So what happens is, in the real world, that when you do the configuration, at that time, you do configuration, you create company code, you configure this, you configure that, and whatever configuration you do, system create a transfer request. That transfer request can be released to be migrated to the quality or production environment. That basically means you actually go and do the releasing. Okay. Customizable transfer request are transfer requests which are not released yet. You've created this transfer request, <coughs> you're testing them, and then it is not released yet. Those transfer requests are called modifiable transfer requests. So now if you see here, a display. So these are, uh, if I close this, So I have a, my user deletes are, this you will be doing. This transaction code, which I'm doing right now, SE10, this is a very important transaction code. You will be working on this. You will be doing that. This transaction code is important. In this transaction code, we can have a transaction code for workbench and for customizing. So I go to customizing. These are the various transfer requests which are there in my name. Which has been created but not released yet. Releasing is done. When you're, when you're done with your configuration, everything is fine. Your configuration is working. You have done unit testing. Now you want that configuration to move to quality or move it to production. When you're ready to move it to the quality and production, 
when everything is done, as for your tested, then you will be releasing. Now, how do you release? See here. So let's say, for example, look at carefully. When I click on it, every transfer request has a task. So in this transaction, port 900110, I have a customizing tab, 900111. First, we have to release task. Very important. You cannot configure transport request directly. First, you have to release the task. So you select here. And you can see the changes, what all changes has been done. These are the different table. You see that here? All these changes has been done in this table. So you can record, you can see what all configuration has been done. So I select that. And then see this, my cursor, this uh, truck basically means release and I can click on the truck it will release my customizing task see the message in the bottom ECC 9011 has been released now after releasing this I can release the transfer request select that and go to release button. So released. So this is very important. SC level. Now we looked at it, uh, T code uh, SC10. There is also T code SCC1. Now, what is SCC basically means? SCC1 is T code, is T code which is used for transporting transfer request from one client, for example, 800 to another client, for example, 900 in same environment. So make a note of that statement. Now, what is the meaning of that is? Now, what is the meaning of that is? The meaning of that basically is that if you look at this picture here, so we have client 800, we have client 900, and client 700. So 800, we did a configuration. And 900 we do unit testing normally what happens in the real world the client where you do configuration you do not do any testing the configuration client is called normally the golden client golden client so where the client where you do configuration nothing else happens nothing else happens only thing which you do in that client is configuration. Sometimes people use the same client for configuration and same client testing also. That also happens. A lot of people use configuration client and the testing unit testing client differently. So we are doing 800 client for eight uh, for the uh, configuration. Now this 800 900 is also example. In the real world, those uh, numbers could be different. Normally, it's a three-digit key only. Normally, numeric. And then we have a 900 to unit testing. Now, I did a configuration 800. I'm doing testing in 900. So how do I move the data from, uh, how do I move my configuration to 800 to 900? For that, we need SCC1. So SCC1 
is a transaction code which is used to migrate the configuration from one client to another client in the same environment. So now I go back. I want to type SCC1. Hit enter. So now here I can define my source client. So what is my source client? So I can choose how many clients are there. So in this box, I have a client uh, 800, 801, 810. 811, 812, so we have multiple clients. We are using most of the time 800. So all of our exercise and everything else we did is in 800. Now in 800, and uh, because this is 800, so it has to be other than 800, I choose 810. I want to move this data from 800 if there is any client. If any configuration available, so basically, this configuration is available. So we can choose that in configuration. So that basically means in this client, this is my source client, this is my transport request. I can do a test run. Normally, people should do a test run and then you start immediately when you click start immediately at that time your configuration from the source client will go to target client target client is the client on which you're logged in so i have logged in the client 800 so 800 is the target client and 810 is my source client so from the source client we can migrate the data to the target client. So that is how system can make entry for one client to another client, one box to another box. So that is what I want to talk today. And uh, today I have some of the important concepts. We'll talk to you next week. Thank you very much. Thank you all. Bye, guys. Talk to you next week.